we're asked to determine the limits if they exist. We'll determine the limits if they exist using a graphical approach as well as using a table of values. Let's begin by graphing the function f of x equals negative six divided by the quantity negative four plus e raised to the power of one divided by x. And I've made this graph using desmos.com. To begin, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the left or negative side. Let's begin by graphing the vertical line x equals zero, which is the y-axis. For this first one-sided limit, we are only approaching zero from the left or negative side, which means we are approaching zero from this direction here. Notice as we get closer and closer to x equals zero from the left or negative side, we can see we are approaching the y value or function value of, of 1.5, which is the value of the limit as x approaches zero from the left. We can also verify this by using a table of values by entering in x values that approach zero from the left or approach zero from values that are less than zero. For example, we could enter x equals a negative 0.1 and notice how the output is almost 1.5, just a little bit larger. An x value closer to zero but still to the left would be negative 0.01 and then negative 0.001. Notice how both of these x values are returning a function value of 1.5. This actually is not true. The calculator is just doing the best that it can. The value is so close to 1.5 that the calculator is giving a function value of 1.5. Also notice how when x equals zero, we have division by zero, and therefore the function would be undefined. It would not be equal to the function value of zero. But we can see, as we approach x equals zero from values less than zero, the function value is approaching 1.5, which does verify the value of the one-sided limit. And now let's go back to the graph. Next, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right or positive side. So now we're approaching x equals zero from values larger than zero or from the right, which means we are approaching zero from this direction here. And we can see as we get closer and closer to zero from the right, we are approaching the function value or y value of zero. The limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right or the positive side is equal to zero. And again, let's verify this using a table of values. Now we're approaching zero from values greater than zero. For example, values like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001. Notice how these values are approaching zero from values greater than zero. Well, looking at the y values or function values, notice how they are very small. We have scientific notation here of, of approximately negative 2.7 times 10 to the power of negative four. As we get closer to zero, we have approximately negative 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 43. Notice when x equals 0 0.001, we're getting a function value of zero. But again, that's not really the case. It's just so close to zero the calculator is giving us a function value of zero. But we can see from the table, as we approach zero from the positive side or right side, the function values do approach zero, verifying this is the limit as x approaches zero from the right. And then for the last limit, we have a general limit. We have the limit of f of x as x approaches zero. In order for this limit to exist, we must be approaching the same function value from the left and right of zero, which we can see graphically, as well as from our work from the first two parts, this is not the case. And therefore the limit of f of x as x approaches zero does not exist. And we enter DNE. So we just discussed two methods for determining these limits, but let's take a look at a more analytical method for determining these limits. For example, we could analyze the graph of y equals e raised to the power of one divided by x. Notice how this is just one term in the denominator of the function f of x. But by analyzing the behavior of e to the power of one divided by x, we can determine these limits more analytically. So for example, going back to the first one-sided limit, we have the limit as x approaches zero from the left or negative side. Well, let's see what's happening to the function y equals e to the power of one divided by x as we approach zero from the left. Well, here's x equals zero. As we approach zero from the left or negative side, notice how 
the function value of y equals e to the power of one divided by x is approaching zero. So as we approach zero from the left, e to the power of one divided by x is approaching zero, which leaves us with just negative six divided by negative four, which is the value of the limit. Simplifying, we do get three halves, or as we had before, 1.5. Looking at the second limit again, we have the limit as x approaches zero from the right or positive side. Again, to determine this limit, let's see what's happening to y equals e to the power of one divided by x as x approaches zero from the right or positive side. You'll notice as we approach zero from the positive side or the right, e to the power of one divided by x is increasing without bound or approaching infinity. So if I go back to the original function, if e to the power of one divided by x approaches positive infinity, we would have negative six divided by an increasing denominator, which does approach the function value of zero. Again, for part c, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, which does not exist because the limits from the left and right are not approaching the same function value. So this would be another approach we could take to determine these three limits. I hope you found this helpful.